Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier and this is The Piracy Show. Now, you may be wondering why I'm in the hammerhead and the reason why is I am examining an idea. There was a comment on one of my videos recently that you know, said, but fighters are actually the fastest through Quantum already. And I was talking about you know, giving help to fighters, giving fighters kind of something to do in the Star Citizen universe. And so I read that, and at first I kind of went, like, I don't think that, no, they didn't change that. Fighters aren't the fastest. And and I thought, well, you know, Minion, you do kind of skip over the patch notes almost entirely every time a new patch comes out, and you kind of focus more on other things, so maybe you missed it. And, you know, that's kind of an important thing, you know. I, you know, I don't really use this YouTube channel as you know, self-promotion or anything like that. There's no Minion Soldier Teespring store or anything like that. Um, I use it to kind of throw ideas out there and examine them and basically bounce them off of all the brains in the Star Citizen community that watch this video and then kind of go like, oh, okay, he's got an interesting idea. Oh, that person's got an interesting idea. You know, that's kind of what the function of this channel is. It's kind of why there aren't any you know hey you know click that bell like the you know there's none of that crap i i you know if people want to sub they sub it's like i'm not gonna sit here and be like hey come on but anyways i decided to test out the idea of traveling in quantum which ship is the fastest large medium or small now you may note that it looks like the fighter isn't traveling at quantum, but it actually is. You'll notice as the sun starts moving, for some reason, I got some kind of a graphical glitch when I was recording this, and the, the basically the quantum field never appeared. But rest assured, the Buccaneer is traveling at quantum. Now, they don't all enter quantum at the exact same time. It was kind of difficult to nail that down. But I I went, you know, when I saw the results, I kind of went, you know, a second here, a second there. No big deal because the results were a little bit surprising. And I have to say that a second here and a second there really wasn't going to make much of a difference. So I had believed that as in previous patches that you know the larger ships were indeed the fastest and then it you know it scaled from there i was incorrect now the counterpoint was that small ships the fighters were the fastest that was incorrect it's in fact the medium ships the Freelancer beat the Buccaneer. Now, this is traveling from Lyria OM1, so each ship started from the exact same spot, traveling to Crusader. So, basically 42 million kilometers. Those are two kind of fixed points in space, basically. They're all making that journey. And... I mean, yeah. I've, I've already kind of stated it, but the, the Freelancer is going to win. And it's going to win by... A healthy healthy margin now the point of the original video that um, I put out was I was talking about the many inconveniences in operating a fighter and certainly CIG's last calling all devs where they talked about PvP kind of reinforced a lot of those problems they were talking about you know bringing the right armor bringing ammo bringing food water supplies things like that and how detrimental it can be if you don't have those things and you you might be trapped in a situation where you're just going to die because you don't have these things and in a lot of the fighters the dedicated fighters and not kind of the multi-role fighters like let's say a you know an origin 300 or the what's it the reliant I guess technically fits into that category as well. There's other little ships that have something of a small interior, but the dedicated kind of World War II-esque cockpit fighters simply don't allow you to kind of carry what you need with you. And those limitations coupled with the limitations of quantum fuel, because another thing to note about this is both the Hammerhead and the Freelancer are free to travel after they get to their destination. 
the first thing that the Buccaneers are going to have to do is stop and get fuel because it's almost out. So even though it came in second, arguably, I think a fair point could be made that it it really it was actually further behind. It was still ahead of the large ship, but it was much further behind the medium ship than is you know apparent just by their travel times. There's a lot of inconvenience and a lot of problems kind of going along with fighters right now. And I think that one of the one of the problems on a, on the community side when dealing with the problems with fighters is is that for a lot of people arena commander is kind of the measure of the fighter. That's where we kind of you know, look at the fighters and we go, oh, this one's got this many angles of turning and it does this and it does that. And everyone's kind of focused in on what they can do in Arena Commander, which I think is just, it's it's such a terrible environment to use as your test bed because it doesn't allow ships to really move. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't allow for anything outside of this tight little bubble. And I feel that that's a very incomplete kind of picture of a, fi- uh, of a fighter's usability in the Star Citizen universe. And so because a lot of people kind of focus on that, they're not really focusing on the day-to-day life in the Star Citizen universe of one of these fighters. They're thinking of it from a Squadron 42 or an Arena Commander point of view, and that is a that is a badly incomplete picture. In this stage of game development, if you've ever done betas or alphas or anything like that, it's often you know, it, it's often a big mistake to kind of get too hooked into numbers. Like this weapon does this amount of DPS. This shield has this amount of hit points. Because those, because I mean, you're building a house on shifting sands at that point. Because play any game from an MMO like RPG to anything, and you'll know that numbers shift and change all the time. You know, game director says, "Hey, this is my vision. This is the way I want it to be." Doesn't turn out that way. And then things start to shift and they try to kind of go for a more balanced approach and they kind of cull some things and they kind of build some other things up. So kind of focusing on that type of gameplay and building around that is kind of, it's kind of a waste of time. Realistically, the most important thing that you can do with, you know, this type of, uh, you know, at this stage in a game's development is to actually sit there and look at it and say, you know what, Um, I'm gonna look at what are the functional requirements of day-to-day life in that universe. What am I gonna need to get by? What's gonna make my progression, my, you know, my chasing after my goals that much easier? And I mean, that's the most valuable information that you can have, especially if you're gonna be stepping into a new game universe what's the best path for me to reach my goals not you know okay this is the universal this is 100 percent. this is the fastest way to level up or anything like that generally what's going to make your kind of passage through that world the easiest it can possibly be and sometimes that comes with confronting some hard truths you know that what you initially wanted isn't what you actually got and i think that That really is the unfortunate reality of fighters right now is that, you know, even with CIG kind of making some very early stage modifications to the Gladius to allow you to carry a couple of different FPS weapons, that is something that will probably translate onto ships like the Hornet, possibly the other ones in Squadron 42, but the broader universe that's kind of up in the air, you know, as to when something like that would be implemented. Whereas there are these other ships that kind of have that built in already and then some. And these are kind of your medium ships. In a weird way, it it, it kind of it kind of makes it so that medium ships like your freelancers and your cutlasses and on up all the way to say your connies and whatnot are more or less pre-positioned to kind of take over for fighters once star citizen 
comes out. Like they are they are the ships that for the most part they empower your gameplay, right? They allow you to carry all the different suits of armor that you need. Even if the ship, you know, like we make fun of the hammerhead. Even if the hammerhead doesn't have gun racks in it, which is still an absurdity to me. You know, it's ridiculous. You still have all kinds of floor space on the ship to just throw guns on the floor and just dump them right there. Ammo, armor, anything. You can just throw it all on the floor if you wanted to. And it would be right there where you need it. Right? Whereas in a Hornet, you just don't have that. In a Gladius, you just, you don't have those things. And then what happens if you get a mission where it's like, hey, you got to return a piece of cargo. And it's like, well, let's just start ticking ships off the list that can't handle that cargo. So in a weird way, you know, when people were getting all excited and, you know, the Sabre became the thing and the Hornet was the thing and the Gladius was the thing. And they're like, this is the fighter. This is the fighter. You know, I play Arena Commander X amount of hours and this is the fighter that you should be looking at. And this is the changes I'd like to be see made to ship maneuverability and stuff like that. And all these videos, I really started to just tune all of that out because I realized that the ships themselves just weren't competitive in Star Citizen. If you think about the simple scenario that we're constructing here, these three ships making this journey, two of these ships can still go further, can still make a hell of a journey. They can turn around and they can go all the way to New Babbage, whereas the fighter's like, wait up, guys, I got to go and I got to get fuel. Or if you're traveling with a fleet, it's like, okay, bring in the refueling ship. I need to refuel. We right? Like... There's such a logistical tax being kind of heaped onto the shoulders of fighters that their advantages in Star Citizen are are just... I don't see them as being so great that they're actually worth the logistical effort to bring along. That's one of the big challenges. Now, of course, if you got a ship like an Idris, then that kind of changes the equation a little bit, but... How many fighter pilots are accounting for an ever-present Idris or an ever-present Kraken at, you know, at that location? Sure, if you're traveling in a much larger fleet, that makes sense. But as we've seen with the population limits in the game and how far is CIG going to be able to take that? A fully crewed Idris, a fully crewed Kraken, plus the rest of the fleet. You know, that is something that is still very much up in the air. And that's kind of why I was saying, you know, we got to do something with fighters. We got to brainstorm an idea to bring fighters back into relevance because right now, certainly, you know, in Squadron 42, it looks like they're going to be fun. They're going to be your main avenue of fun. But travel, you know, moving into Star Citizen, they're looking ever increasingly like a niche vessel in the Star Citizen universe. And honestly, you know, I think that that's kind of a shame. I understand the appeal of fighters. I understand why people like them. But at the same time, as the Star Citizen universe expands, as new systems come online, I don't just mean like game systems like Salvage, yay. But um, like star systems like Pyro and Odin and things like that as these systems are brought into our kind of star citizen universe people are going to start to really see the limitations of fighters very they're going to feel that very very strongly and it's going to become I think much more apparent at that point in the future that People are going to start to shift away from fighters almost entirely just because of the inconvenience and they're going to start looking at things like the Cutlass and up all the way to things like the Connie, things like the Corsair. And they're going to go, this is easier. This is just flat out. It's an easier way to live in the universe. And I think that honestly, like if we were to get to a point like that, where more and more people started shifting away from fighters, I think that that would be a shame. I think a lot of us kind of have that you know, Star Wars fantasy in our head, you know, flying an X-Wing or something like that. I always kind of uh, 
I always kind of preferred the uh, Millennium Falcon, but I, gu I guess that's apparent in the ships that I choose. But, um, uh, you know, a lot of people have that fantasy, and I would hate to see it kind of destroyed by, of all things, a lack of convenience. Anyways, you know, once again, my point of view, my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And, um, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Thank you, thank you for watching. So, 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 so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in the Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.